Okay, so the Raspberry Pi 5 is officially being announced today and it's definitely been worth the wait. I'm running it in a dual screen setup which I've been running for about a month or so now and it is absolutely excellent. Let's zoom into screen capture. So rather than go through all the specs, what I thought I'd do is show how good the performance is on this. I've been using it for around a month on a dual screen desktop system and it's an absolute pleasure to use. So if we go to downloads, I've got a press release here uh, and that opens up as a PDF so you can see Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, it talks about the processor, 64-bit A76 quad-core 2.4 gigahertz processor. And the big thing about that, rather than all the numbers, is it delivers two to three times increase uh, in CPU performance over the Raspberry Pi 4, which is huge. Uh, and it's capable of dual screen 4K 60 FPS. That's really impressive as well. The RAM is much faster. We have all the usual inputs and outputs, but we have two camera outputs, which also double up as display outputs as well, as well as the two HDMIs, which I'm using with these monitors. I'm really excited about this one, PCIe 2.0, which is uh, a faster socket for storage and various other things. Uh, but it means that we'll be able to put an M.2 or an NVMe drive when we get the adapter, it's got a like a ribbon connection at the moment, but when we get the adapter, we'll be able to connect those fast drives and get much, much faster performance. But actually, the SD card slot is twice the speed it was, and I've been running the operating system, and I'll show a little bit of it later on on the SD card, and it's, it's fine, absolutely fine on the SD card. So if we launch a few web pages, and uh, occasionally I'll switch over to, to dual screen just to show that it's running dual screen, uh, so BBC Sport, uh, Hot UK Deals. And I just don't want to uh, cut anything out of this. I just want to show how it runs and compare it to your own computer and see how you think uh, your computer runs compared to this. It's hard to type and speak at the same time. Uh, but uh, going back to BBC, BBC Sport, you can see it scrolls through really, really quickly. Hot UK Deals, not struggling with that. Even though there's loads of images and elements on the page, if we go to Raspberry Pi News, Tomorrow, this should have the Raspberry Pi 5 front and center on here, but it's not there yet. It's Wednesday and it should be coming out or should be announced Thursday. Uh, and I think the release is sometime in October, but obviously they'll tell you more about that at the time. So web performance is great. Uh, if I launch something like LibreOffice Impress, which is, is basically like PowerPoint. I keep forgetting you've got to double click on those. So you can see this is launched nice and quick. Uh, we can select a template down the bottom here. Uh, oh, I clicked on the wrong thing then. So let's open that one. Let's minimize this web browser, but I want to keep that running. In fact, let's drag that web browser over to the left hand side so it doesn't keep popping up if I accidentally click on it. So insert an image and let's pick the big one on here, uh, which is Monaco, I think. Yeah, it is. So let's move that down a bit. And you can see that it's not struggling with that. Let's insert one more image. Uh, let's just pick the top one here. Uh, and this is Woolacom near me. So you can see it doesn't struggle with that at all, but let's keep that open and let's launch Audacity, which is some audio editing software and show that that, that works as well. So uh, I've, I've messed about with something earlier on. So let's discard that and yes to permanently delete. And let's import uh, a track. So we've got on my desktop, I've got, there you go, some garage band music, and that will play and can be edited. So let's move that over to this window as well. So get that out of the way of here and close down that page. What else can we launch? Uh, we've got Conky on here, uh, which is basically will show us what's running. You can see it says low voltage there. Uh, that's because I'm using the Raspberry Pi power supply. I haven't had any problems with it at all. Oh, did I not launch Conkey? System tools, Conkey. There you go. So this will show us various different things are running at the moment. I can also do the same with say something like P sensor uh, and launch that, which is showing me the overall temperature. I'm only using a three volt connected fan and you can see that it hasn't risen above 48 degrees at the moment. Uh, what else have I got on here? Uh, so I don't want to do any more Office. Well, we'll launch another browser. So this will be Firefox, which I don't think I've launched on this yet. I've always used Chromium, uh, but we'll see how well that runs. 
So let's do BBC Sport again. So I've got two browsers running at the same time, except the license. And uh, well, that one's going a bit slower, but you know, how often do you run two browsers? And it's got a few pages open here at the moment as well. So let's close that one down. And uh, what else have we got in here? So, oh, VLC in here as well. Now, am I playing a video? Oh, I haven't played a YouTube video yet, but what I'll do first of all is open a video. And uh, so desktop and all well, this will also be, uh, or Nice or Mon yeah, Monaco. And you can see that that's playing. That's GoPro footage on there. Let's close that bit down and go to YouTube. Let's drag that back over. And just to show you that it's playing, it only plays in 1080 because I've got a 1080 desktop at the moment, but um, this is also beta software and it is running really impressively. Uh, so Lee PSP HDR and let's just scroll down and start that playing and you see that it launches nice and quick. I can go full screen and that's playing at 1080. So if I quit out of that, let's close down the web browser. What else have we got? I'm not sure what else I've put on here. I've been installing all sorts of things and just sort of messing about with things uh, and sensors and things like that. Oh, Raspberry Pi Imager, we can launch that. We can launch, uh, say for instance, PyKiss, uh, which is the one with the graphical user. I can't remember if I've done a video on this, which is various different ways you can add things meant for a Pi 4. Some of these things work with a Pi 5. Uh, I've been playing around with all sorts of things, but they'll come out in later videos. And also we've got, uh, where's uh, Pi Apps, which is uh, the way I've installed certain things on here. So let's move this out of the way, double click on that and execute. And there you go. And there's Pi Apps, which is a way of installing things. Again, some things work. They are more designed for the Pi 4. I'm sure they'll be updated in the future. But uh, yeah, so really, really good performance. It also shuts down and starts up super quick. So if we go to shut down, uh, log out and shut down, and I'll look on here to see when the, yeah, so 1.2 volts, so that's already switched off. And if you wanna turn it back on again, you'll hear the little click when I press the little button. So there's a power button now, uh, my monitor light. And you can see it's starting up it's detected the SSD and it's booting. And I think they quote something like seven seconds. So obviously if we start to get NVMe drives, that's gonna be even quicker, but yeah, super quick. So I put an SD card in and I plugged in my controller because I wanted to show a little bit of gaming. There's not a lot of gaming at the moment, but let's press the button and show how quick that starts up. So we're looking for a blue light on the side here. You can see the very, very quick boot up and it will soon be into Raspberry Pi OS, just after this screen, and we're there. So I've been playing around with Raspberry Pi OS a lot and installing all sorts of things and just seeing what works and what doesn't at this early stage, because obviously things are written for the Pi 4 uh, and not necessarily the Pi 5. But PyKiss uh, surprisingly worked really well, and uh, especially the configure option where I installed Vulkan uh, and the Mesa driver, so all to do with 3D graphics, and uh, I also, uh, if we go into Vulkan Info, you'll see that all sorts of things are recognized as being installed. Some are false, uh, some are coming up uh, that it's not. As I say, this is meant for the Pi 4, so I wasn't expecting much to work. Uh, but if we go to VKQ, you can see that's running fine. Uh, and let's try some games. So I didn't have a lot of success with PS2 or the Dolphin emulator, but I did with PPSSPP. And this is the PlayStation Portable emulator. And this is uh, at a resolution of three times PSP, uh, which is really good. Uh, looks really decent. Where am I going? So if I do load state, just to skip past all the menus, you can see all the menus and everything run really fast. So the level of detail is excellent in this game, and especially at three times PSP. Remember, this is a portable game, but uh, it looks great. Look at the detail on the side of the van. Uh, and if we see things like the lights, look how, how people are lit up by the lights that are there, all the barbed wire on the fences. It, it really is excellent and performs really, really well. Anyway, let's quit out of that. 
and also show you that Minecraft installed as well and that was installed through Pi Apps. So if we go up here and again in games, a Minecraft Pi, this is a modded version uh, and this is the survivor one on far distance. So start game and I've just got a world that I've got here and you can see I'm using my controller to move around and everything is nice and snappy. Uh, we can go full screen. What do I have to do? Escape, maximize it here, and then back to game. And you can see that even in full screen, it's coping really well. If we get up a bit higher, just to, to have a bit of a look around and show that it's on that far draw distance. And it is perfectly playable. Again, this is a really early stage. This software's in beta. These aren't the official drivers or anything, and yet, it's working and uh, it's actually pretty decent. So I'll definitely be doing more videos on the Pi 5. I've already got a few, uh, which I've got one on cases and one on a Raspberry Pi 5 tablet as well. They'll be coming out very soon. Uh, but if you go to my channel, there is a playlist on there which has just Raspberry Pi content. I'm not sure if I do uh, keep the Raspberry Pi one, but also do a separate one for Raspberry Pi 5 because I'll be doing so many videos on it. And uh, where is it? If I go to playlist here, uh, remember this is running from an SD card, just a 32 gig basic SD card, uh, and it's working really well. So this playlist has got over 600 videos and uh, installations of Windows 11, Windows 10, older versions of Windows, Android, all sorts of versions of Linux, RetroPie, all sorts of setups and things like that. But loads of those videos don't work with the Pi 5, so I'll be doing new videos that show you exactly how that works. So if you couldn't already tell, I am very impressed with this Pi 5 and can't wait to see what the community is going to do with it. The Raspberry Pi team have done such an incredible job with this and uh, it really is going to be so popular. And, and this is the first Raspberry Pi that really is a very credible desktop computer. I did use my Pi 4 as a desktop computer, but this gives such good performance that loads of people are going to be using this, especially in dual monitor mode. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.